Keith Boss Kloss spent three years in the NBA with the Los Angeles Clippers from 1997 to 2000. At 7'3", and the NCAA's all-time leader in blocks per game with 6.4, there's no reason why Boss Kloss spent just three years in the league, besides his off-the-court demons and antics that caused his career to technically be canceled. He was, admittedly, a Los Angeles gangbanger, a guy who brought guns into the locker room, who got into numerous off-the-court fights that kind of spilled into the league having to take action and suspend him for an entire season. He's a guy who knows, you know, what trouble is in the NBA and how it can lead to him getting out of the league. I've interviewed Keith before on myself and Jermaine Barnes' podcast, The Truth Podcast. Now, he's a great guy with tons and tons of stories, and I feel like he's the perfect guy to dissect the John Morant situation. Jaw's accusations, his off-the-court antics, and everything that's happening right now. Just the other day, John Morant, one of the you know biggest rising stars in the NBA, flashed a gun on his Instagram Live, which got him suspended from the NBA for two-plus games. Right now, it's two games. We don't know how many it's going to be. But I feel like, again, Keith is the perfect guy to give him advice of the mistakes not to make. And if he does make those mistakes and continues to make those mistakes, what could ultimately happen to him, which could be a year-long suspension or even worse, losing endorsement deals or his NBA contract as a whole. So who knows what could really happen with the Morant situation, how much farther it could go, but I'm excited to bring in Keith Foss to get his advice for Morant and what his thoughts are on the entire situation in this social media world of showing off a gun on your Instagram Live. That's, uh, that's something that'll definitely get you in trouble in this day and age, and of course, this day and age in the NBA. So Keith, I appreciate you being on. Welcome to episode 46 of Inside Buzz. Hey, glad to be back, man. I set it up all in the introduction. John Morant, one of the brightest stars in the NBA, 23 years old. New police reports came out that last summer, he allegedly beat up a 17-year-old kid after a pickup game and aimed a gun at him. Another incident occurred after an Indiana Pacers game where he was with his boys in the car and, again, allegedly, they pointed a gun at Indiana Pacers coaching staff and players. Then the other day, Ja hops on Instagram Live brandishes I don't know if it's a real gun people are alleging it's a lighter but a gun like object on his screen you know what are your thoughts on what Ja has been up to and the two game suspension he got from the NBA it's amazing how sometimes we we don't use the common sense that we've been blessed with you know in certain situations there's no way in hell you should be pulling a gun on anybody let alone a kid playing pickup ball. You know, if there's an argument that's going on, be man enough to walk away. You know, you got millions of dollars, you get paid millions of dollars, you know, walk away, walk away, especially when it's an underage minor. That's, that's just not smart at all. Beating up a kid, driving, you know, pulling up on coaching staff and brandishing a firearm on them. What are you thinking? This is all kind of detrimental, which is why, you know, brandishing the firearm live or whatever it is on, on his IG live. That's one of the dumbest things anyone can do. You know, um, <clears throat> it's, it's, a uh, it's self-sabotage. That's the best way to put it. Self-sabotage. He's lucky that he's only gotten the two, the two game suspension. You know, I, I lost a whole season. So hell. He's fortunate that it's only two. It's only two games, and and why aren't these guys, why aren't these young guys, learning from our mistakes that we made in the past? You know, seeing the repercussions of our mistakes, saying, you know what, I don't want to deal with that, so I'm not going to do any of those things that these guys did because I want to stay here. I want to last here. I want to continue to be able to create this, you know, pass on this this wealth to future generations of my family, you know, give my grandkids and my great grandkids something to live off of for my hard work. It's got the easiest job in the world, being a professional basketball player, getting out there and just getting paid millions and millions of dollars to play the game that he loves. And Keith, like you said, you were there. You were a former, you know, gangbanger from the streets. What was your story? What was that suspension for the season? What happened with that one? It was basically a, everything that had transpired over three years of me being with the Clippers. You know, I'm the type that has the fight or flight, and it's never flight for me. It's always fight. 
So I fight for what I believe in. I stand up for it. I stand up for myself. And a lot of times, that's not well received. Another way I fought back, and which was totally wrong, was I dove more into alcoholism. You know, with the mindset, I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna play tonight, so I can go ahead and get my drink on instead. You know, and those types of decisions only hurt me. You know, I'm, I wasn't the guy who could sit there at the end of the bench and collect the check. Well, at least they're paying me. I'm just going to get this free money because, you know, my pride and ego played a big part of that as we spoke about before. Let me show you why you're paying me this money. But, you know, everything happens for a reason, man. I have no regrets about any of my past experiences because those are the things that shaped me into the man that I am today and put me into the position that I'm in today. And that position, for those who don't know, he's about... I think 10 to 15 years sober, coaching overseas in Turkey right now, you know, doing great things for different communities around the world in basketball. But, you know, Keith, that's amazing, all of that. Ja, you know, you were kind of in that position, 21 to 23 years old in the NBA. What's your maturity like at that stage? You know, you come into the league 19, 20 years old with that huge check coming in. It, it has to be a, a world changer. But what's that like when one foot is in the hood and one foot is now in the NBA with all that money. Oh man, you know, it, it's so confusing because it's so conflicting because I've seen situations where people come into some money and they leave the hood and they never come, they never come back again. They never show their face again. You know, they elevate to something better, bigger, better. And they turn their back and forget about all the BS. Um, just hearing the way that my peers spoke about them, how my peers felt about the way they just up and left everybody like uh um like a sense of abandonment you know and i didn't want to i didn't want my peers feeling that way about me so that's where the confliction came in i wanted i want to elevate with this and you know be able to give my family all the things that we never had but then i don't want to turn my back on my roots and who i am you know the people that were always down with me because i remember when so and so did it I remember how they felt about so-and-so and what they said about so-and-so. I didn't want them to feel or say those same things about me, you know. Um, he didn't come up like that. And there's so many family photos that prove, you know, that he didn't. You know, he's got two great parents, supporting parents in his life. His father was in his life. My father was in and out of the penitentiary for most of my life, you know, also on the other coast. So I didn't grow up with my dad in a household to guide me the way that Ja has been blessed to, you know, to have his father um, and his dad's present in, at his games, too, and, and so supportive of his number one fan, you know. So I, I, know, I know there's some, some disappointment that his father's got to be feeling, too, because he's looking at this situation like, I didn't raise you like this, so why are you acting like this? This is so out of character and you can tell it's out of character you know it's, it's just a sad 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 thing to see you came in the nba late 1990s playing into the 2000s obviously a way different culture way different world to begin with without social media you know okay uh ja was accused of beating up that kid pointing the gun and then again accused not confirmed for the pacers incident okay that being said why jump on social media and show it off on Instagram Live that, you know, you have a weapon on you. Even if it's, say it's a fake lighter, th those those gun-like lighters that could light whatever, a cigarette, a blunt, whatever. Why show a gun-like object after all those allegations came to light? Ignorance and immaturity. There's no reason. There's no reason to try to prove to be somebody that you're not when everything and gets us out there about you proves already that you're not this type of person. Keith, in your career, who is that veteran? Who is that mentor that kind of tried to steer you out of harm's way? Was in your ear saying, Keith, you, you gotta you gotta get off the streets. This is this is getting ridiculous. You know, you're way too skilled, your future's way too bright. James Hollywood Robinson and Rodney Rogers. Those were the two guys that eventually got tired of seeing my shenanigans and called me I wasn't you know I wasn't trying to hear it because you know I'm, I'm too filled with my own ideologies of 
what the world is and how I'm going to attack everything that's coming my way. You know, when I wasn't able to really appreciate their words until later down the line, once I had started to mature more, you know what I mean? In your career, you made $6 million. John Morant currently at 23 years old, NBA salary and also endorsements is up to $200 million. That, I mean, just the interest on that money could accumulate to even more wealth, let alone any investments he'll make in the future. He Does he have everything to lose in his career? Absolutely. Everything. Everything can be gone just like that. You know, um, especially if you're not managing your money well and you're trying to see one, one thing that happens with professional athletes and entertainers is once the money stops and we're so used to living in a certain lifestyle uh, we don't dumb it down you know we don't because we think that money's gonna it's gonna last and it does just subtracting from it you know because we're still living in this multi-million dollar mansion and the utility bills are still you know sky high and we're still buying the the the, the high-end cars you know the the boats like scotty pippen he had bought a yacht i think he had spent something like seven million dollars on a yacht and then got that repo because he couldn't you know the, the upkeep was too much you know that's how a lot of us professional athletes end up going even when we retire and get our pension the pension isn't as big as what we're hoping and thinking it's going to be you know and and we have to dummy down a little bit more and really start to think logically about okay how can i how can i use this best i, I just hope the kids made some some good investments because at, at this point man he's he's gonna you know he's gonna screw himself We've seen it in the past. Many players, I'll use the word blackball. That seems like what your situation was. You know, the league kind of gets sick of guys who are causing problems, don't live up to the image of the NBA, you know, not getting into any trouble and stuff like that. Not saying that's happening now, but is Ja on the path to blackballing himself if he doesn't change? Absolutely. Absolutely. One thing that we as athletes have to remember you know, it's absolutely necessary that we remember is that we're we're expendable. We are expendable to these teams because there's so much talent out there that's just waiting for the opportunity. They're waiting for one of us to slip up because that's how they're going to get their chance. You know, that's what happened in my case. I slipped up. They pushed me to the side, brought in the next man, you know, and the show continued without me. You know, while I floundered and tried to figure out what I was going to, you know, do with the rest of my life, how I was going to get my life in order. So these things happen all the time. It happened in football. They happen in baseball, basketball, you know, soccer. It happens in every major sport. You know, once once we screw ourselves out of a out of a situation, it's it's so much easier for them to move on from us. Everybody's expendable, especially like you said when hundreds of new kids are growing and coming into the league each year. Uh, Keith, I remember about a year ago, you are on ESPN's The Truth Podcast, myself, Jermaine Barnes. Um, you told me a story about bringing in an AK-47 into Clippers practice after an altercation. Can you tell that story here? And the reason why I want you to tell that story is you've been in Jaws' position. And I know, you know, that, that you say that's not your proudest moment. Yeah, it isn't. It was after a string of incidents with a few, with several of my teammates. And, you know, this latest incident that brought this out with Maurice Taylor choking me from behind in practice. And, uh, you know, I had enough up to that point. I was fed up with everything that I was going through with the organization, you know, and, and with these uh, few teammates of mine, uh, Lamar Odom and Michael Odo Candy. And uh, I had to, in my mind, it was okay. They think this is a game. Let's show them what's up. Let's show them what time it really is. You know, and leaving practice and coming back with the gang attire, my AK-47 over my shoulder. You know, taking rounds out of the out of the 
the clip and tossing them to the guys. And Lamar, what is this, son? What is this? And, you know, was letting me telling them, keep messing with me. You're not going to catch the next one. You know, and then taking the bullets back from them, the rounds back and wiping them off and putting them back in and, you know, slinging it over my shoulder and leaving out of practice. Walk, walking past Elgin Baylor on the stairs on the way out, and he's got this puzzled look on his face asking me what's going on. I told him, I said, Elgin, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the BS. You know, they're going to stop playing with me. Everybody's going to stop playing with me, you know. But I had to explain, you know, that, I was the one who was basically giving guys passes to go enjoy themselves in the city because this is during the bling era, Mikey. Everybody's got the big two, three carat diamonds on their ears. You know, they got the diamond grills, the golden diamond grills, the big iced out chains and pendants and rings. And, you know, guys in the city of Los Angeles were thirsty. You know, they were hungry. And they were getting it from the mud. And so athletes and entertainers were easy pickings. You know what I mean? It was like going out to the orchard and just picking the, whatever fruit you wanted. You know, picking grapes from the vine. You know, because it was plentiful. Everybody was doing it. You know, and uh, me getting phone calls from guys from other neighborhoods that I knew and Asking, hey man, can we get so and so who, who's in who happens to be in town or happens to be at the club that night? Man, look, he's flossing, he's got all this on. Man, you know, you know what I can do with that, you know. And the trouble that I had gotten into with the NBA over other events that I had nothing to do with, but because I'm gang oriented, you know, and everybody knowing it. They figured I had to be involved in it some way or another, you know, and I was never the type that would try to victimize my peers in the NBA or in the entertainment industry, you know, so I would never let anything happen to them. And when things did happen to people and I found out, I would take it upon myself to go retrieve their items and get it back to them, you know, and just tell them, hey, these are the times we're in right now. I wouldn't advise you wearing these things when you come out, you know, leave it at the hotel, put it in the safe at the hotel, you know, don't come out to the clubs with it because you're going to make yourself target. And guys had become targets, you know, and it's just, hey, I'm just glad that a lot of our players aren't doing that anymore, you know, because they're, now they're removing themselves from harm's way. If you were perfectly clean in your career, you came up from a good upbringing like John Morant, you know, you weren't, didn't have the alcohol problem even before you got to the NBA. Would you, would your career have lost, have lasted, excuse me, a lot longer than three years? Absolutely. Absolutely. Barring injury, I probably would have played until I was 40. And I'm playing in veterans leagues and veterans tournaments, you know, here and we, we travel to different countries. We travel to Bulgaria. We travel to Italy, you know, to play. I've got a tournament coming up next weekend, you know. So, yeah, if if uh, if I came up like that, man, there's no way in hell I'd be in Turkey right now. You know, I, I'd still be living living large in America. But, um, hey, things happen for a reason, man, you know. And there was a bigger purpose for me. And so it was absolutely necessary for, for my life to, to travel down the path that it did, you know? So, and then here we are now to where my experiences are coming into, you know, coming back into play to where I can speak on a young man who's, you know, starting to travel down a similar detrimental path. And I hate to see it. I hate to see it with these guys, man, because, you know, like I said, there's so many of us from the past who have already been there, done that. And we've spoken about it openly, you know, to help prevent these guys from making the same dumb mistakes. But, you know, to each zone, some of us, we have to hit our head a few more times and a, and a lot harder than others before we, okay, I get it now. If Ja doesn't clean up his image, will he be the next Allen Iverson? 
I mean, Iverson eventually cleaned up his act, but he was a superstar player in the NBA, a young guy troubled by his past, the bowling alley incident, and then a bunch of different incidents in the NBA that, you know, after a while had people kind of rubbing him the wrong way. It could very well happen, you know, and he'll find himself playing overseas. I, I really hope it doesn't happen. I really hope that he learns from his mistakes and that he can get himself back on a you know, on the path he's supposed to be on and that he can stay there and have a long, successful career, you know, injury-free and just happy, live a happy life, a happy whole life playing a game that he loves. People, Mikey, who try to throw my past, I still have people who, you know, to this day, who still try to throw my past in my face. 20 years later, 25 years later. So he doesn't, he doesn't want that. He doesn't want that, you know. Doesn't matter if he gets over it and moves on with his life. People say there's a way to hurt him and try to bring him down, you know. And a lot of these guys, are, this generation seems too sensitive to handle those things. You know, he's going to fall into depression. Maybe there'll be a little alcoholism. Maybe there'll be a little dabbling in this and that. You know, we see it. We see it happen all the time with guys, you know. And that's just something I don't I don't think he or anybody else wants to deal with. So I, I wish him luck. And, uh, you know, if I had a chance to talk to him, I, you know, I absolutely would. Do you think this has to do with the commissioner of the NBA not, not being hard enough on his players? Because David Stern notoriously was. So does that play into this? Uh, well, it depends. I mean, look how hard he was on Kyrie with, a, with the retweet. You know what I mean? So it, it depends on the situation uh, on the players. You know, they, they pick and choose at times. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Keith Bosskloss here for episode 46 of Inside Buzz. Keith, I appreciate all the insight on Ja, the situation, and just somebody being there giving him advice. Hey, man. It's an honor and privilege, and thanks again for having me.